and give God some praise. You can do better than that. Come on. Let's give our Lord Jesus Christ some praise in the house. I know it's late in the afternoon, but God is still worthy of the praise. He's still worthy of the praise. Come on. Come on. Just wave your hand just a little bit. Come on. Tell the Lord thank you. Come on. Tell him thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Protocol has been established, and so I just want to thank God for the truth. Anybody thank God for the truth? Amen. I thank God, amen, that God has brought us from different ways, different ways of life, and amen, and brought us unto this truth, amen. So I thank God for the truth. The Bible said that he hid it from the wise and the prudent, amen, but he revealed it unto babes. So I thank God for the truth. Anybody thank God for the truth today? No. Do you really, really, really thank God for the truth? Do you really thank God for the truth, the word of God? And if you really thank God for the truth, amen, I want to talk to you today about the truth of marriage and divorce. Ah, oh, you said you want to know the truth, right? Amen. So we thank God. I've been tasked, amen, with the assignment of Amen. Giving, talking, speaking to you about marriage and divorce. And is it proper for someone to be married and still have a living spouse? Amen. Today, I want to talk to you from a message. Amen. What's love got to do with it? And I'm not talking about Tina Turner. What's love, somebody shout, what's love got to do with it? Amen. Marriage and divorce and women pastors are the two most debatable, amen, topic in church today outside of, amen, the Holy Trinity and the oneness of God, amen. And so one thing we must understand that marriage is a covenant that was established by God, amen. The Bible teaches us that God established the institution of marriage. It was God that said that man should not be alone to live alone, that he, listen, he's going to make him a help me. And so it was not man who decided that he didn't want to be alone. It was God that decided in the garden when he created Adam and Eve that man should not what? Live alone or be alone. So it was God, amen, because God knew how it felt to be alone. So when in the beginning, when God, it was God, amen, it was God by himself. There was no Holy Trinity. There was nobody else but God. So God understood how it felt to be alone. So when he created Adam, he said, listen, I'm going to make him a help me. And so listen here, we need to understand that the system of divorce was not, amen, established or created by God, but it was created by man. Are y'all with me today? Uh, if you have your Bibles, go with me to Matthew. Let's get into the Bible. And I try not to be before you long. Matthew chapter 19. Amen. I have uh, Minister Lewis is going to read for me today. Matthew chapter 19, when you have it, uh, verse 1, when you have it, say amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 19, verse 1, read. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. Keep reading. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Is it lawful for a man to put away, in other words, divorce, his wife for every cause? The Pharisees came tempting Jesus, amen, trying to tempt him and test him on his wisdom about marriage and divorce. And so they wanted, amen, to deal with the controversial issue of that day, amen, of marriage and divorce. So they wanted to put him in a position and say, is it lawful? Amen. And so they sought to challenge Jesus about his interpretation of her, his thinking on this subject matter. But the problem that we have here now is that, listen, it was God that gave Moses the Ten Commandments. And so now, how do we deal with that? We need to understand that when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, there was actually 613 laws that the people had to abide by. Are y'all with me today? And so now, listen here. Every time that, listen, when people begin to sin, the children of Israel begin to sin, Moses had to, what, extend the law. 
And the Bible said, thou shalt not commit adultery. And so Moses saw somebody having incest in their family. So guess what? He had to extend the law of Moses. And he saw someone that was dealing with bestiality. So now he began to extend the law. So he, now we have 613 laws. Are y'all with me today? So the Ten Commandments are just a summary of, listen, the 613 commandments. Now the Pharisees are come to test Jesus. They say, is it lawful for a man? to put away his wife for any reason. And so go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 24. Let's see what the Old Testament says about this deal that we're dealing with. Marriage and divorce. What's love got to do with it? Deuteronomy chapter 24 verses 1 through 4. Amen. If you don't know what it is, it's after the book of Numbers. The book of Numbers is the counting of the people in Deuteronomy is to do over the counting again. So Deuteronomy chapter 24, when you have it, say amen. amen. Read. When a man hath taken a wife uh -huh. and married her, and it comes to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he has found some uncleanness in her. He has found some uncleanness in her. This is the debate of the day. What does uncleanness mean? Read. Then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. Uh huh. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send it her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife. After that, she is defiled, for that is abomination before the Lord, and thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. So now there are two schools of thought that we're dealing with here. It was, we have the two rabbis. There was one Rabbi Shammai, and the man, the school of Shammai was one of the strictest interpretation of this law. So basically, he felt that, listen here, that, listen, there had to be some uncleanness in this woman to, to put her away in order to be divorced. But now you have Hillel, amen, he had to more of the liberal, amen, thought of this interpretation about you can put your wife away for any reason or any cause. So that was the debate about far as can a man put his wife away for any reason? If she burnt the chicken, if she listened, she overcooked the rice, if she gained some weight, listen, if she got mouthy, can we put her away? And so now the debate is, listen, can I put her away for any reason? Look at, go back to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, we're going somewhere tonight today. Matthew chapter 19, let's continue reading at verse number 4. Matthew chapter 19, verse number 4. When you have it, say amen. amen. Read. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? In the beginning he made them male and female. Read. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. Now Jesus, now he goes to the beginning in Genesis and said, listen, there shall be called, there shall be one flesh. In other words, they're not longer twain, but they're, they're one flesh. And he called them male and female. Just a quick public uh, announcement today, service announcement today. Listen here. When we think about marriage, understanding what marriage is really about, marriage is a covenant between a man and a woman. Amen. In the beginning, the Bible didn't say that God. God created Adam and Steve. God created Adam and Eve. And so when God made man, when God made us, man and female, he made it with an any and he made them with an Audi. Amen. You can see, if you don't know where you are, or you don't know what you have, just go in the mirror, in the bathroom, take all your clothes off and look what you got. That's what God had created you to be. Are y'all with me today? So God has created everyone that's in here with an any or out I don't care if you go on Amazon and try to buy some parts on your own. It's still not the real thing. If you have Amazon Prime, it, it does not matter. Listen here, you better go back and send it back to sender because listen, God made female 
female and he made a male. He didn't make anything in between. And so now, listen here, there's only one door that God created. You can't go through the back door. God created a door. And so he said, he that entered not by the door, but climb it up some other way, that's a thief and a robber. If you see you try to enter in the back door, the Bible said that you are a thief and a robber. That's only way that God created, designed the back door ain't nothing but an exit. It ain't nothing but a sewer line. Somebody shout, ain't nothing but a sewer line. So let's get back to marriage and divorce. Amen. I just put a pin in that. We're going to get it back to the, our subject matter. So God said, the Bible said that God made male and females. Amen. So therefore, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. And so what we have today, we have people that's trying to separate people and put them asunder. When you go get a, your lawyer, what you're doing is to try to put it asunder. But what God has joined together, amen, when you come together in unity and then you stand before the preacher, amen, God has joined you together. Are y'all with me today? Put your hands together and give God some praise. So people are trying to separate what God has joined together. We try to put marriage as something that is, it is like, don't you understand that marriage was ordained and instituted by God and God hate divorce. Are y'all with me today? Or oh, go into Malachi chapter two, 2, verse 16. Let's look at what this says today. Amen. We have to look at the attitude of God towards this subject matter. What does God have to say? We know that Moses allowed it to happen, but what is it in the mind of God? Malachi chapter 2 verse 16. For the Lord, the God of Israel, said that he hated putting away. God hate putting away. In other words, God says I hate divorce. I don't care what anybody say about it. This is clear. You don't need a Greek. You don't need a Hebrew. You don't need a Bible inter interpreter. You don't need your concordance. The Bible said that God hate putting away. He hates divorce. Read. For one covers violence with his garment, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that ye deal not treacherously. Ye have wearied the Lord with your word, uh -huh. yet ye say, wherein have we wearied him? When ye say, everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord. Everyone that does evil is good in the sight of the Lord. Amen. Go over to Ecclesiastes. Not Ecclesiastes, cuss, but Ecclesiastes. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter for y'all didn't get that. Y'all get it on the way home when y'all when y'all get into the car. Well, I said, don't go to Ecclesiastes as it cuts, but Ecclesiastes. Are y'all with me today? You'll get it from by and by. Just, just think about it. Rub your neighbor, nudge your neighbor and say, what is he talking about? Ecclesiastes chapter 5. You with me, minister? All right. Ecclesiastes. Amen. Chapter 5. I want to read verses, amen, verses 5 through 6. Ecclesiastes, I'll give you time to get it, chapter 5, verses 5 through 6. You have it? Read. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Better is that thou should, what, not vow that thou should vow and not pay. In other words, listen, you better not make a vow and not keep your vow. Read. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. In other words, when you keep, you give God a vow, you, you stand and say, I'm going to do such and such before the Lord and say, you try to take it back, amen. Back in the day when I grew up in Miami, they said that you were nigging. Amen. Listen, you said you're going to do something and now you're trying to take it back. Shout somebody, you were nigging. Don't renege today. You better keep your vow unto God. Read. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands? For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there are also divers vanities. 
So Solomon admonished us that, listen here, we have no business give, saying a vow and then try to take it back. Are y'all with me today? Amen. If you're going to do a vow, this is a song that I made a vow to the Lord and I can't take it back. Amen. When you stand before the preacher, when you stand before the family and friends and, and great witnesses, you made a vow unto God. And, and we see here in Ecclesiastes, Solomon said, once you make a vow to God, you cannot take it back. When I, when I got married, people used to say in that day, for better or worse, or listen, well, for richer and poor, or what's in what, in health and in sickness, amen. And now we got people, listen, you stand up before the preacher and say, yes, judge, I do, I make the beans and I make the rice, amen, because you're so happy that day you made a vow unto God, you made a vow unto your spouse. And now, listen here, when things start getting a little rocky in your marriage, you say, I'm getting out of here. But what about your vow? God said, you better not make a vow and try to take it back. You better keep yourself, amen, away from these vows. But once you make a vow before the Lord, you got to keep it today. Are y'all with me today? Amen. And so now, amen, we stand up and say, I do. But now we say, I do until she gets on my nerves. He said, I do be until she lets she stay a little slender and she don't get, get gain any weight. Hey, let, I do unless she, listen, she stopped keep, uh, burning these bacon and, and listen, he started doing all the things that I don't like. I mean, I do unless I find somebody better. They said, I do, but listen, you made a vow unto God. Amen. Are y'all with me today? And now we want a prenup. Amen. Listen, just, just in case it's, it's an insurance, amen, just in case we don't make it, amen, but you made a vow and said, I'm going to live for you with you the rest of my life. If you made a vow unto God, you made a vow unto your spouse, how in the world you get a prenup, amen? All you got is, listen here, is $20 in the bank in that old Chevrolet that, listen, that's leaking oil. You ain't got no money anyway. How can the world you get a prenup, amen, to have insurance, amen, if just in case I don't make it today. Amen. You got to understand. You got to get rid of this prenup. Amen. I made a vow that uh, for rich or poor. Amen. Listen here. Through sickness and health. Amen. Anything that we go through, my vow is good. I made a vow before God. I'm going to do it the rest of my life. And somehow we have lied unto God. Amen. And I had an old deacon from my old church named Deacon West. Amen. He gave a profound, amen, information about marriage. Amen. He said something that was so powerful that I still remember it to this day. Yeah. Amen. I can't shake it. Amen. When you listen to the old saints, amen, they tell you how to keep your marriage. They tell you how to make it through. Amen. He gave me the secret of marriage. Y'all want to hear it? You got to promise to keep it to yourself. It's between you and I. Amen. It can't leave here at these doors. I'm going to show you and tell you something that's so profound, it's going to blow your mind. You know what he told me? He said, listen here, young man. He said, the best way to stay married is to stay married. <laughs> Amen. You can't jump ship every time things get rocky and rough. Amen. We look at marriage as like a stock market. Amen. It goes up and it goes down. You invest your money into this. Amen. Listen here. When it goes down, you say, oh my God, i am got to get out of here. I'm losing my shirt. But you got to hang on in there. Don't jump ship. Don't put all your interest and your investment into this marriage. It's going to go back up again. You can't look for the exit door. You got to stay in there and keep your vow. Tell Lord, thank you and give God some praise today. And now, because she don't gain a little weight, you feel like I got to get something, a young little filly that's on the job. But it was because of you, amen, who wouldn't leave her alone at night, amen. She got all these babies. And now that she gained some little weight, you want to get out of here. Amen. But look at you. Amen. You ain't, the, you ain't no honor sports nigga yourself. Amen. When you first got married, you used to have a six pack. Amen. But now you look, she on her third baby in the third trimester. Amen. She look around and say, Bun, honey, look, we got matching stomach. Amen. You ain't no Hercules yourself. Amen. Listen here. You got to hang in there. You can't get out of this pain right now. This is a covenant from God. You 
you made a vow unto God and you can't take it back. And you can't take it back. Back in the day, amen, we had, we had this, uh, we had a lot of people, they liked these Chevy cars and it, it was a big body car. Amen. They love the Chevy cars. Amen. It, it went down the street. Amen. You feel you lean back with the gangster lean. And now, amen, listen here. That because they gained a little mileage on it and, and listen, the tall, the tires a little bald. Now, got a little dits and, and dings in it now today. You see the new Tesla that's coming out. It's nice and sleek and it's not designed. Everything you look at it and say, ooh, I want the Tesla. But what about the Chevrolet that you love so much? Hey Amen. You want to jump ship and get something else because it's the new model that's on the scene today. You better stay in there and ride your Chevrolet. I don't care. Listen, the, the window's coming down. I don't care if it got little dicks and bruises in it. You better hang on. Listen, back in the day, we had the Chevrolet. Listen, in the Chevrolet, it ran to the tree. The tree went down and the Chevrolet didn't have a scratch on it. But now you get these new models called today. It hit a mailbox. Listen, it's going to break it. It's going to bend up like a tin can. You got to stick to your old model. Don't go for this new stuff. You got to hang in there. Amen. You see, you got to understand you got to love God with all your heart, with all your mind. You made a vow to God and you can't take it back. You can't take it back. And some people get married for the wrong reasons. Amen. You get married because I'm lonely. Amen. You get married because you want somebody to help pay these bills. Amen. I, I need somebody to help pay this car note. I need somebody to help pay this mortgage, this rent. It's getting rough out here today. Amen. I need somebody to help me out. I got to get out of here. I need some money to come in. Some people get married because they get hot in the flesh because, listen, they want a good thrill. But just like B.B. King said, the thrill is gone. And once the thrill is gone, you gone. Are y'all with me today? When the thrill is gone, listen here. You got to understand. You got to start living. When the thrill is gone, you got to start. You got to put your foot on the ground and start paying some bills. When the thrill is gone, listen here. You got to stand still and start communicating with each other. When the thrill is gone, what are you going to do? I'm going to serve the Lord and I'm going to hang in there. I'm going to hang in there. Amen. Go back to me to Matthew chapter 19. I'm getting close to the end. I just want to share with you some things. Matthew chapter 19. Let's go back to it. And we're going to look at verses 7 and 8. Matthew chapter 19. We're going to go back to it. Amen. When you have it, say amen. Read. They say unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? Uh huh. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffer you to put away your wives. So Moses, because the hardness of your heart, in other words, he allowed it. And so if, if Moses allowed it, amen, that means it wasn't allowed before. Amen. You need to understand this. God never re required uh, what designated divorce. Because the hardness of the man's heart, because listen, that, see, the issue is here, it's a, it's a heart problem. Because man's heart is so hard against his wife, Moses allowed it. We need to understand that, listen, back in the day, in Moses' day, he, Moses was trying to, to protect the wives at any cost. Uh, back in those days, you had the husband that was mistreating their wives. And so, listen, because the woman, she probably gained weight because she a little mouthy every now and then. He said, listen here, I want to get rid of you. I'm, I'm getting tired of you. I, said, I see Sister Bonquisha, she on the street. She treat me nice, amen. I see sis, uh, Susie May, she's on a job and she make me some coffee. You better get that coffee back. You got a wife at home. You got some children you got to take care of today, amen. So now listen here. They begin to say, listen, Moses, amen, we got to get out of here. So Moses said, you can't misretreat your wife the way you do. You can't 
dog him out and treat him all kind of way. You can't mistreat your wife. So Moses said, listen, I'm going to allow it this time. He said, listen here, I'm going to make a law that you can't put your wife out just like any kind of way. You can't put her out just like a dog. Amen. Because back in those days, you need to understand that like the women were more domestic. They depended on their husband to be financial support unto them. And so now, if listen, if they were kicked out, they had no financial support if they did not have a husband. So they were out in the street, this destitute, with no help and no financial support that's in their lives. So Moses said, I'm going to allow it to happen, put a, a bill of divorcement in her hand, then you can send her out, listen, so she can be back on the market. Are y'all with me today? And so now, you got to understand, listen here, Moses, he allowed it to happen, but Jesus said, from the beginning, it was not so. Amen. Look at verse 9. Real quick. Verse 9, Matthew chapter 19. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except to be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. This is very powerful. And, and Jesus said, and I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. We're going to deal with that today. And shall marry another, committed what? You commit adultery. And whosoever, amen, he didn't just leave it right then and there. Now he said, and so whosoever, that means that somebody who's been put out or who was put away, do it, commit adultery. If you marry that person that's put away, you also commit adultery. Are y'all with me today? So now Jesus is making it plain today. He said, listen here, uh, Moses allowed it back in the day, but I'm going to straighten this thing out here today. Uh, it was not so from the beginning. Hey, listen, he said to the fact that if you put her away, you send her out. You come. You marry someone else. You commit adultery. And even if the person, Amen, Ray Ray Pookie, then then back in black man, whoever it is, they marry her. They also commit adultery. Are y'all with me today? Mm. So they commit adultery. So now Jesus, Amen, he teaching the same thing, and we see even Luke record the teaching of Jesus. Go me to Luke chapter 16. Let's get to the scripture. Luke chapter 16. Let's look at verse 18. Luke chapter 16, verse 18. Follow me in the scripture, please. Yeah, this is a, 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 man, a, a touchy subject, and we need to go through the scriptures and see what the Bible says about this matter. Amen. Opinions don't matter. How you feel, how your mama feel, listen, how Bishop Tumtu, he believe, whatever it is, your opinion can go out the window. It, what, what is the word of God says? What does the scripture says? Amen. I'm going to live by the scripture. If Jesus said, I'm going to abide by it. If the apostle said, I'm going to abide by it. I don't care anything about your opinion. It's what the word of God says. Are y'all with me today? Don't look at me like that. Luke chapter 16. Verse 18. Read. Whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another committeth adultery. Wait a minute. Now we see it again. And so we saw it, we saw it in Matthew. Now we see Luke recording the same teaching of Jesus. He said, Whosoever put away his wife and married another committed adultery. All right. And whosoever married her that is put away from a husband commit adultery. Amen. So listen, there's no way around this thing. I don't care how you feel about it. Listen, he said, if the one who's, who put away, if someone had married her, then you commit adultery. Now you get out there, you want something new. Amen. You want something shiny, a new toy. And listen, you want some extra meat. And listen here, he said, you commit adultery. Are y'all with me today? Now let's look what Mark says. Mark, Go to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. And we're going to look at verse 11. Mark chapter 10, verse 11. And you're going to read verse 11 to 12. Start off with verse 11. And he said unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committeth adultery against her. Now you see this uh, again. It repeats the same thing. And he said unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committed what? Committed what? 
committed adultery, amen, against her. And so now we look at, let, let's look at verse 12. Read that. And if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she committed the adultery. So now we see another twist in this. So listen here. Jesus said, listen, uh, I, I know it's, 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 it's prevalent of the man to put away his wife, but he said, I'm going to cover all grounds today. He said, if the woman, she gets a little big-headed and she get a, a little testosterone in her, listen, and she beating on the man and slapping across his head and, and she get a little something in her, she got a prenup in the hand and she said, if she put him away, listen, and she marry another, she also commit adultery. Are y'all with me today? So now we see that Matthew record the conversation. If a man marries someone and he put his wife away and marries someone else, he commit adultery. We see Mark records the same thing. We see in Luke, it says the same thing. So now we see uh, from gospel to gospel, amen, it says the same thing. If you put away your spouse and marry another, you commit adultery. And if the person who put away or divorced, she or he that marries someone else, they also commit adultery. Am I in the book today? And now we see that Apostle Paul, he said the same thing in his writings. Go with me to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Verses 1 to 3. Amen. I hear AJ, he got the scriptures today. Romans chapter 7, verses 1 to 3. Read. I know, uh, know ye not, brethren... For I speak to them that know the law. I speak to them that know the law. How? That the law have dominion over man as long as he liveth. Uh-huh. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband. For the woman which hath a, a husband is bound. Somebody say you bound. bound. Is bound by the law to a husband. Read. So long as he liveth. So long as he liveth. Read. But if the husband be dead. But the husband be in hospice. Mm. Dead. If the husband be on life support. Dead. Amen. If, he, if he's shivering and, and you ready to get your second husband, your second wife, and, and his husband, whoever you're looking for, and he, he looked like he, about, he got COVID and he, he, he coughing, you look at him and hoping he fall out. Amen. Listen, if he be dead, dirt dead. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law. Now she is loose from the law oh. of her husband. And so, it, 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 see, we got to understand it takes death to break this marriage covenant. Because didn't you make a vow, said death, unto death do we part? Did you lie on God? Did you lie on your husband? Did you lie on your wife? Amen. To death do we part. And so God said, listen, Paul said, unless they be dead, dirty. You, that, in other words, if they in the hospital, you can't be going out, stepping out on your spouse. And say, he almost dead. They said, they give him three months to live. Read. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. Uh-huh. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she should be called an adulteress. So while her husband liveth, in other words, he's still in hospice. They give him three months to live. They trying to take him out and make him comfortable. He said, listen here, while her husband liveth, she married to another, she be married to another man, another man, she shall be called an adulteress. Are y'all with me today? Read. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress. Those should be married to another man. So now we see in scripture, Paul begin to talk about to the Romans, listen here, uh, she, you can't get another meat, you can't get another, amen, chicken, you can't get nothing else, but listen, unless that person is still living, that person got to be dead, I'm talking about dirt dead, amen, you can't get nobody else. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 39. Now, we see that Paul began to deal with the Romans, but now he goes and talks to the church that's in Corinth. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 39. Read. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. 
I don't care if you go get three or four, five different husbands, amen. Uh, if he's still living, that's still your first spouse. It's quiet in here. Read. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. Now, if the husband now is dead, she can marry who she will. But listen, Paul is saying, listen, you can't go out there and get you a ghost. You can't go out there and get you a saved thug. And I, I, I talked to some people years ago. They said, Elder Anthony, listen, when I get married, I want me a saved thug. I said, a saved thug? I said, listen, that's an oxymoron. You can't have those two words together. You can't be saved and thug at the same time. Amen. You got to be saved and, and feel. And listen, you got to understand. You got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Then you be saved. I want to correct that now. Are you with me today? So now, Paul begins to talk about, you see, Luke is saying the same thing, that if you divorce and marry someone else, you commit adultery. And then you see in Mark, it says the same thing. And now you see Paul is talking the same thing unto the church that's in Roman and also the church that's in Corinth. And so now we see Matthew. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 19. I'm almost done. I'm getting ready to close it out now. Matthew chapter 19. Let's go back there real quick. Let's look at read verse 9, 9 again, Matthew chapter 19. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. So now Jesus said, except it be for fornication. You have some people out there that say, oh, oh I got a loophole there. Uh-huh. I, I, I found there, hey, amen, I saw some text messages, and I saw, her, I saw him, he, he, he's texting Susie May and Sally and all these different people, and I caught, listen, somebody, my best friend, she saw them in the mall holding hands, and listen, uh, I found out, listen, I, I got a detective, and I found out that he was cheating on me and, and all these different things, so Jesus said, except it be for fornication, that's my loophole, now I can go out and find somebody else. Just hold your horses. Don't move too fast. Now, Matthew, you got to understand, amen, wouldn't have an isolated view from Luke and Mark and also Paul teaching, amen. Amen. They talked about the same thing. And now, we got to understand Matthew, uh, he's writing to the Jewish audience. He's writing to the Jewish mind. If you know how the gospel is laid out, Amen. Matthew, listen, is the first book in the, the, the gospel. But in reality, the book, the gospel of Mark was written first. Did y'all know that? It was the gospel of Mark that was written first, but they, they put in the canonized Bible, the scriptures, they put the gospel of Matthew first. The being is it connected the Old Testament with the new. Amen. The old last book in the Old Testament was Malachi. And so now we have to tie it together. So Matthew was writing to the Jewish audience. In other words, he wanted them to know that, listen here, it was Jesus. He was the Messiah. Are y'all with me today? That's why when you read the back of the book of Matt, Matthew, you start reading it said he begot he begot he begot it's trying to show you the lineage of who Jesus is amen he came from the throne of David are y'all with me today so now Matthew he's writing to the Jewish mind I want you to understand that just Jesus he is the Christ that he is the Messiah when you look at the gospel of Mark Mark was writing to the Roman mind and listen you look at the gospel of Luke Luke was writing to the Greeks amen and so you need to understand this when the gospel of John, uh, John was writing to show you that Jesus is God. That's why the scripture started in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the words was God. He's trying to show you that Jesus is God. But now Matthew, amen, he's writing to the Jewish mind. He's writing to the Jewish audience. And so he said, and I say unto you, whosoever put away his wife, except it be for fornication. Now only single people commit fornication. Uh, married people, they don't commit fornication. They commit adultery. Somebody said, oh, preacher, I got your own nap. Amen. When you search the Greek, amen, it says it's for nil. Amen. Listen, it means anything sexual or immorality. Amen. Listen, you got to understand. Yes, it's sexual immorality, but who is it being, it was being done by? If it's done by a single person, it's called fornication. If it's done by a married person, it's, it's called adultery. Amen. If you're married, are y'all with me today? You cannot commit fornication. You have to submit. You have to commit adultery. Adultery, because you need to understand the way the Bible was written up. Matthew was writing to the Jewish mind. Mm. So now, fornication and adultery 
are two separate things. Y'all don't believe me? Go to Galatians chapter, chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Let's look at verse 19. Amen. Galatians chapter 5. In verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Uh -huh. Which are these? Yes. Adultery. Adultery. Fornication. Wait a minute. So now Paul is talking to the church in Galatia. He said, now you have fornication is different from adultery. Are y'all with me today? So they cannot be the same thing. We find out in scripture, amen, that fornication and adultery is the same thing. So now in Matthew chapter 5, it also is said the same thing, except it be for fornication, amen. You got to understand, you wouldn't have Mark saying the same thing. He would not say, except it be for fornication. Luke would not say, except it be for fornication. Uh, John wouldn't say, except it be fornication. And Apostle Paul never said, except it be for, for fornication because Matthew was writing to the Jewish mind. Go to Matthew. Well, don't go there. I just for the sake of time. And so now you can't make up your own rules. You can't do what you want to do. Amen. You got to understand the Bible is right and somebody wrong. You can't have your second chicken. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Amen. Once you get into this, amen, it's a lifetime commitment. It's to death until we part. Amen. Listen, she got to be dead. He got to be dead. And that don't mean you got to put a hitman on her. You going to jail. And they going to lock you up for life. Are you with me today? So when you read the Old Testament, adultery was never a case to get divorced, amen, because if, in the Old Testament, if you commit adultery, amen, the death, it was a death sentence on your head, because in Leviticus, it tells you if someone was to commit adultery, they had to be stoned to death, and so listen, when Jesus said, except it be for fornication, amen, that was a death sentence on your head, because in the Old Testament, if somebody committed adultery, they had to die. So the only way that you can get out of this marriage, marriage is somebody had to die. You had to be stoned to death. So now we see Matthew chapter 19, Matthew chapter 5. It coincides, listen, with Mark, Luke, and, and Paul's writing. It's the same thing. If you marry someone else, you put away your spouse and marry someone else, you commit adultery. And the person that is put away, if they marry somebody, they also commit adultery. It's quiet in here. Don't look at me like that. Amen. Go to Levit Leviticus chapter 20, and, then, and I'm going to get you out of here. Leviticus chapter 20. If you're in the New Testament, please, please, please get over to the Old Testament. Leviticus chapter 20, amen, and we're going to have one verse. That's verse number 10. Amen. Read. And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. They shall surely be put to death. And the man that committed adultery with another man's wife, even he that committed adultery with the neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. To death. Are y'all with me today? So death was the only cause to free someone in the Old Testament from marriage. So now when Jesus said, except it be for fornication, what he's saying is the only way you can get out if that person had to die or stoned to death. Are y'all with me today? That's why when in the gospel they found the woman, she was found in adultery. Amen. Listen, they brought her unto Jesus and they said, under Moses said that she must be stoned to death because they want to kill her today. Are y'all with me today? So now, listen, they want to kill her. The only way that you get out of this marriage is you had to die. So when you look at the scripture, divorce was never a cause. I mean, adultery was never a cause to get a divorce. Are y'all with me today? Moses only allowed it because of uncleanness in the person. But when it comes to sexual sin, it didn't happen. 
But now, look at this. You need to understand, uh, when the woman's caught in, in adultery, Jesus pardoned her, amen. But Moses allowed divorcement because of the uncleanness of their heart. But now God corrected this in Jeremiah. Go over to Jeremiah chapter 3. Let's look at verse number 1. Jeremiah, follow me in your Bible, and I'm almost done. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 1. You have it? Read. They say if a man put away his wife. They say, not God. They say. Pookie say. Ray Ray say. Black man say. Red them say. Nene say. They say. God didn't say it. Read. And she go from him and become another man's. Shall he uh, turn unto her again? Uh Uh-huh. Shall not that land be greatly polluted? Mm Mm-hmm. But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. But thou hast played the harlot. In other words, you going around hoeing around. He's talking about the children of Israel. Uh, You hoeing around after other gods. Read. Yet return again to me. Yet return again to me. I, I, I know you whoring out there. I, I know you you stepping out. I know you doing some things I don't like. Amen. I got you on camera. Listen, my, my homeboy, my homegirl, hey, they, they, they saw you. And listen, I, I, I see what you're doing, but return back home. Verse 8. Verse 8, read. And I saw... When for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery. Now, backsliding Israel, they commit adultery. Read. I had put her away. Now, God said, listen, I put her away. Oh. Now, you see, God said, listen, you commit adultery. Uh Uh-huh. Moses lied, so I'm going to put you away, too. So, he said, I put her away. I put, I gave her a divorcement. Read. And given her a bill of divorce. Uh huh. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not. Uh huh. But went but went and played the harlot also. Now listen here, your big sister, she was hoeing around, and the little sister falling behind her, she started hoeing around too. Verse fourteen. Verse Turn, oh backsliding is children. Turn. Look at here again. It says now. Turn, O backsliding children, said the Lord. Keep reading. For I am married unto you. For I am married. Now look at this. God said, I have put her away. I gave her a written letter of certificate of divorcement. He said, now return back to me. Listen now. He said, come back home to me because I'm married to you. In God's eyes, even though you might have a divorce, you might have a piece of paper in your hand. He said, listen, I am married to the backslider. Listen, you may put your husband away. You may put your wife away, but you're still married to that first husband that first wife. I don't care. Listen, you might have a happy home, but listen, you ain't married until you're married. You get that first husband, that first wife dies. Read. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family, Uh and I will bring you to Zion. Now, start right there. Now, God says, listen, I'm still married to you, even though you were whoring around. Even though you were stepping out on me, amen. If God said, listen, uh, if I got to keep my hoe, and listen, you got to also keep your hoe too. I don't care if you found her in a whorehouse. You found her on the block selling that thing, listen, on the the street corner. You got to understand, you got to keep your, that's yours to death, do you part, amen. I don't care if she burned the bacon, hey, listen here, if she gained some weight, she mouthy all the time. Listen, you better love her and, and love that mouth shut today because that's still your wife. That's still your husband. I don't care what you're going through. God still loves you. He didn't put you away when you were doing your thing in the club. You were out in the street. Listen, living all kind of raggedy drives. You know your life was raggedy than a mango seed. But listen, God still loved you anyway. You were slipping and sliding and hoeing around, sleeping with this person, doing what you want to do. But God said, I still love you. 
uh, when you were contrary, they didn't even want God. They said, God said, I still love you. God did not throw you away. Thank God. God's loved me so much. What's love got to do with him? God loved me so much. He saw me in my mess. He still loved me anyhow. That's why the scripture said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. In other words, love is a sacrifice. God made a sacrifice for you and you and you. Hey, you got to understand, if God loved you so much, you ought to love your husband. You ought to love your wife. I know they ain't all together. I know they messed up. I wasn't all together. You wasn't all together. You were out in the street, on the club, doing the two-step, doing the stinky leg, doing all you can do. But God said, come on home. I love you anyway. When nobody wanted you, God loved you. When you was out in the dumps, hey, man, the dog looked at you and shook his head and said, mm -mm -mm. they don't go on down to the dog. But God, he still loves you. God didn't throw you away. God didn't give up on you. You can't give up on your spouse. You can't give up on your husband nor your wife. God still loves you today. What's love got to do with it? Tell her thank you and give God some praise. God still love you. Uh, God still love you. And hey, listen here. When you were in your darkest hour and you didn't know what to do, amen, God still love you anyway. When you came in the church and you went back out the church, you backslid and backslid time and time again. God still love you. Hey, listen, when you was on that crack and cocaine and your family said, I can't do nothing with that boy. I can't do nothing with that girl. God still love you. Amen. Listen, in your biggest mess. Amen. God still love you. Shout, God still love me. God still love me. And if God loves you, you ought to love your husband and spouse. To death do we part. I made a vow and I can't take it back. Oh, you can't take it back. My, my conclusion scripture, go to Matthew 19, I'm done. Matthew chapter 19, I'm done. Let's look at the conclusion of the matter. Amen. You got to understand. Amen. The only way that Jesus can get out of this, that he had to die. He was in a bad marriage. I know you might be in a bad marriage too. But God said, I'm stuck. Shout, I'm stuck. You stuck like Chuck. You can't get out of this. God said, the only way, I'm talking about Jesus. I mean, I'm, I'm the creator of the heaven and earth. Amen. He had to obey his own word. He said, the only way I can get out of this, I got to die. Amen. They put him on Calvary Cross. They stretched him high. They put nails in him. And he had to die to get out of this thing. And so he can marry you and I. Are y'all with me today? Oh, you can't get out of this thing today. You're stuck like Chuck. You better love your house, your wife, and your, your spouse, your husband. Go to Matthew, and I'm done. Let's read the scripture, and I'm going to get out your way. Matthew chapter 19, verse 10. Read. His disciples say unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. So they question, uh, if, if, if we can't get out. See, people get confused. They know what they were talking about. They knew what Jesus was talking about. So Jesus, we can't get out. Is it good to marry? Read. All men cannot receive this same. All men cannot receive this. Save they to whom it is given. To whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs which were born, so which were so born from their mother's womb. Amen. You know what a eunuch is, right? Yeah. Somebody can't have sex. Amen. Yeah, I know that the Hebrew boys in Daniel, they were eunuchs. They were castrated. Yeah. They were eunuchs. Read. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. Uh-huh. They were castrated. Read. And there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. Paul said Paul never got married. So he said, listen, I don't get married. So if he can't get married, he can't have no sex. Read. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Let him receive it. Because guess what? If you don't get, you don't get married, you, gotta, you stuck like Chuck. If you can't receive it, you better stay single. Read. Then were there brought unto him little children that he should put his hands. Start right there. So I want you to understand. Put your head together. Give God a praise. We can't get out of this. This is the word of God. So we need to understand those who have a mind to get married. You got to go with the mindset. 
that this is for life. And if you're struggling right now, seek the face of God. Seek counseling. Love your spouse. Love your husband. Love your wife. And if you divorce now, if you can get reconciled, ask God to put in your heart to get back. Or you just got to stay married, living single. Because this is the word of God says. I don't know about you, but I want to please God. Anybody want to please God today? Amen. You can make it to heaven without a spouse. You can make it to heaven without getting married. You can make it to heaven without getting sex, having sex. We went to the hospital many times, and I never went on the, the, the HIV, the, uh, the AIDS ward, and somebody see somebody <laughs> dying. They said, poor thing, what happened to him? He died, never had any sex. You're not going to die. You better live for God. To death, do you part. Tell Lord, thank you. Put your hand together in Jesus' name.